Hello everyone, if you are using an old multimeter and are looking to buy a new one with more modern functions, don't miss this video. Right after this, I will introduce you to a 2-in-1 multimeter, the ET828 Pro. It's both a multimeter and has the functionality of an expensive oscilloscope. Moreover, its price is very affordable and it will greatly assist you in repairing electronic devices. This multimeter is called the ET828 Pro, and it comes from the Tooltop brand. Tooltop is a company that specializes in manufacturing measuring instruments. Their products are very diverse and all have excellent build quality. Inside the box, we will have a multimeter stored in a fabric pouch, Cat3 test probes, and a user manual. You should carefully read the user manual, even if you're already familiar with using a multimeter. The more advanced the device, the more difficult it can be to use, and improper usage can lead to irreparable damage. This multimeter is very compact, fitting comfortably in the palm of my hand. Though small, its technical specifications are impressive. It can measure DC voltage up to 1000 volts, AC voltage up to 750 volts, and current up to 10 s. Additionally, like other multimeters, it can also measure diodes, capacitors, resistors, frequency, etc. The most special feature is its oscilloscope function, with a frequency range of up to 10 MHz. I will disassemble it to show you what's inside, although doing so will void the device's warranty. You can see that the internal circuit board is packed with surface-mounted components. The central microcontroller is an STM32F400, along with a power IC, ROM, and a small relay for calibration. The IC with its markings removed is a high-speed ADC. When the oscilloscope mode is activated, it reads signals from the test probes and displays the measured signal as a waveform. This oscilloscope uses three AA batteries. I recommend using Beston rechargeable batteries, which have a high capacity lithium core and provide a stable output voltage of 1.5 volts throughout the discharge cycle. The stable voltage will help ensure your measurements are more accurate. The front dial is used to switch between the working modes of this multimeter. The first two modes are oscilloscope modes for DC and AC signals. The following modes are for voltage measurement, diode testing, resistance, capacitance, frequency, and current measurement. This multimeter also has an auto shutdown feature, turning off after 15 minutes of inactivity to save battery life. Next, I will install the test probes and use this multimeter to check and repair a faulty inverter. This is also my daily work. You will see that with the ET828 Pro, repairing electronic devices becomes very simple and quick. This is a 24 volt to 220 volts inverter that has malfunctioned, which a customer sent to me for repair. The device was used on an island and has suffered severe corrosion from seawater. I will disassemble it and inspect the extent of the damage. A preliminary inspection reveals that all eight MOSFETs have been burnt out. This inverter uses eight IRF4110 MOSFETs, which have a voltage rating of 100 volts and can handle up to 180S. With just eight MOSFETs, this inverter can provide a continuous output power of up to two kilowatts. The cause of the burnout is that four of the output diodes were compromised by seawater. 
Three of the four diodes are shorted, causing an overload that immediately burnt out the MOSFETs. I will measure the diodes and show you the shorted ones. Use the continuity mode and place the test probes on the diode. If the multimeter beeps, it indicates that the diode is faulty. Next, switch to the diode measurement mode and check the VF, which typically falls in the range of 0.4 volts. I will replace the original RFR 1560 diodes, which can only handle 15 eighths and 600 volts, with the RHRP 3060 diodes. The new diodes can handle 30 eighths and 600 volts, so they will certainly be more durable than the original ones. I will also replace the 8 IRA 4110 MOSFETs with 12 NCP 85T14 MOSFETs. With 12 MOSFETs, I believe the repaired device will handle overloads much better and operate cooler. Don't forget to replace the gate resistors of the MOSFETs as well. They often burn out along with the MOSFETs. Typically, their values range from 10 to 47 ohms. In this case, I am using 10 ohm gate resistors. Before installing the MOSFETs, I will check the MOSFET control signals. Since the signal is DC, I will select the first function on the multimeter. The black probe will be connected to GND, and the red probe will be connected to the gate of the MOSFET. All control signals must have a VPP greater than 10 volts and a square waveform. The frequency should be 45 kilohertz. If these conditions are met, you can proceed with installing the MOSFETs. Next, I will test the MOSFETs before installing them into the inverter. Using the diode measurement mode, place the black probe on the drain and the red probe on the source. This will check the internal diode of the MOSFET. Typically, the measured value should be around 0.5 volts. Select MOSFETs with similar values for consistency.
I have installed the MOSFETs and diodes in their correct positions. Next, let's use the continuity function to check the insulation between the back of the MOSFETs and diodes and the heatsink. This step is crucial because if the back of the MOSFET touches the heatsink, the consequences could be catastrophic. Finally, I've completed the repair of this inverter. Next, I will check the output voltage, waveform, and frequency. If all parameters are within the acceptable range, I will reassemble the casing and send it back to the customer. As you can see, with the ET828 Pro, the inverter repair process went smoothly and quickly. The price of the ET828 is also very reasonable. In fact, the fee I earned from, from repairing this inverter was enough to buy the ET828. Pro. You should consider adding this device to your essential tools. That's my advice.